So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to save yourself and not the world. Mm -hmm. That in saving yourself, you shift the perspective of seeing and realize what the world really is. You realize that world is a creation of the mind. In a way, it is about saving yourself from the mind, seeing through the great delusion that the mind is and how powerful that delusion is and that the whole world is an expression of that delusion. That the whole world is an expression <laughs> of that delusion, right? Because the possibilities that will be offered in the world to try to find answers in the world and try to save the world will be many and they will be constant. But if you don't know who you are, then you are just adding to the delusion and dancing, we could say dilly-dallying, using delaying mechanisms. The absolute focus has to be upon remembrance of true nature and using the faculties that we have been given to enter into the resonance of remembrance. And what we have been given is that we already are the presence of being. We already are. And in the stillness, in the silence of being, we enter into the frequency of remembrance. It is a finer frequency than that of the mind. The frequency of the mind is loud, it's brash, it's dense, and it gets attention because we have been habituated to listen to it. And we almost have a fear of not listening to it because the setup is, you don't listen to me. If you don't do this, then something terrible is going to happen to you. It's connected with this deep-rooted belief, which is the human condition, that believes I have done something wrong. Something is wrong with me. And that is why difficult things in this life have happened. It's not the truth. What is the truth is that we are to see through the delusion of sin. You are not a sinner. You are not a problem. You are not broken. And as long as you believe that you are, you will be lost in the delusion. It's absolutely fundamental, paramount, that the focus is upon seeing through the delusion, not trying to fix it, not trying to fix the me. And it is so incredibly difficult to not follow that belief and all of the ways that the mind wants to offer possibilities. The mind keeps creating possibilities to continue to perpetuate the delusion and the idea that you can be fixed. Well, if I just do this, then maybe I'll be able to abide in the being. No, never can the person abide in the being, right? The being is already abiding in itself and you are the being abiding in itself. You are not the pers person that is on a mission to be able to abide in anything because the person can only ever abide in the mind because the person is the mind. And this whole unfolding and everything that we are pointing to here is illuminating and shining the light upon what is true, the true nature, 
the truth of who you are, the true divine reality, in order that through the pointings, you keep turning to the resonance that is fine and subtle. That is for sure, it is fine and subtle. But once you open to remember that you have the perception, the ability to subtly perceive your true nature, the intelligence of who you are, then your focus naturally starts to rest in this finer frequency and the refinement and the deepening into being the being that you are and releasing the illusion of separation and the belief in personhood and division, the belief that you are someone that has to find a way to know this truth, to abide in this truth. It is to see right now in this moment that is a plan that has no happy ending, right? That is a plan that is going nowhere. Any ideas that if I just do this, then I'll be able to get it, then I'll be able to abide in the being. Going nowhere, absolutely nowhere, just deeper into the quagmire of the mind. It can be tricky because it is a very fine line between the way that we speak about true inquiry and working to release the discordant patterns and the ideas of working within the psychological realm to do some kind of somatic or trauma work. What we're speaking of here is not that. It's a fine line, but your mind will be led towards, oh, I want to learn about that. I want to know about that. I want a system for that. This will help me abide in the being. It's just not the reality and how it works. The mind will never believe this because the mind is absolutely committed to keeping itself alive. But here, we're all about truth. We're all about, only about truth. And really enlivening what is true and what is the true way to know yourself. It does involve meeting the feelings. It does involve true inquiry. True inquiry is wisdom, natural wisdom. And it can only happen when you are aligned with the being and allowing the flow of intelligence to open up. To, because the true inquiry is the natural flow of consciousness to know itself. And it will keep inquiring to open up what is in the way, what is in the way, what is in the way. It's like a, a laser sharp focusing on the knowing of itself that just keeps that radar <clears throat> focusing, focusing and clearing away anything that the mind has created as an obscuration. The only instruction in truth that is relevant and important is to be here now. Rest as the being. Remember the frequency and confirm within your knowing who you are. Because as you confirm in the knowing, the felt sense, the direct sense of being the being, being the awareness, aware of what is moving and changing, and yet untouched. This is where we open to the remembrance of the finer frequency of true nature. And it is only here in the finer frequency in the wide open landscape of consciousness that we have the possibility of truly unraveling 
the discordant patterns and opening to the finer and finer frequencies. In truth, we need the nourishment of being to release us from the residues of the mind's holding patterns. We need the nourishment of knowing the love that we are and being absorbed in the peace and the bliss and the love. We need the nervous system to be flooded with this nourishment. And we need to, through this being flooded with nourishment, we open to the light, the grace of the light that is eternal life. It is the eternal. So we open to the infinite eternal remembrance and we need this in order to collapse the residues of the mind's habitual tendency to move in conditioning. We cannot do this work, let's say, through the mind alone. You cannot find yourself and open to the finer frequencies through the mind. And if you get focused just working through the mind without refining the frequencies, you will improve your experience of being a person. Of that there is no doubt. But you will not free yourself. You will not free yourself from the delusion of the play of the world. The whole world is the most extraordinary web, tangled web of delusion, and everyone is bought into it. The grace of this possibility is to see through that, to see who you really are, and to then be truly free, living the divine reality right on the surface of life, not trapped in the worldly delusion. And so you see your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to save yourself, to save yourself from the mind, from the world, and not try to save the world. It's a hopeless case because you are just working within the mind to make better stories. This is about seeing through the entire story, not being trapped or bound by any story and most definitely not being bound or trapped by the story of spirituality and all of its ideas of how it's going to save you. In a way, this meeting is a recovery meeting. You may not realize that, but it's a recovery from spirituality. It's an invitation to see what is true, to recognize the dead ends and delusion of the world. And in a way, we could say open to what true spirituality is. And that you are that truth. And you have to come to this truth, standing on your own two feet, in your power boots, resting deeply in your heart, wide open, with your eyes open, your ears open, to all that you are, to all that you have believed yourself to be, to welcome all of yourself, to stop trying to fix yourself, and to welcome all that you are into the presence of now, into the presence of love. Love is openness. Love is who you are. You are a wide open field of absolute truth. It will never ever make sense to the mind. And there will be many beings that will try to sell you all different kinds of ideas of spirituality, 
of what is true, what is the way. And this is why it is so important that you follow the truth of the heart. It is not to believe anything that is spoken here. Do not take the words as a truth. Let the words be a transmission pointing you to recognize where you feel alive. This way, what is being offered here, is not better than anything else. It's not worse than anything else. It is a live, here now, transmission of the field. And the invitation is to not listen and believe anyone, anyone, not even this one, but to receive the transmission, move deeper than the habit to believe, and open to your own wisdom heart, your own wisdom light, open to the intelligence of the heart that knows, and open to the resonance of remembrance, the frequency of your divine heart, the divine heart that you already are, and recognize where you can feel a resonance of truth, a sense of being alive, a knowing, something that feels a frequency of truth but makes no sense to the mind because this truth makes no sense to the mind. Truth itself is self-sufficient and whole and as soon as it gets made into a system through somebody's mind in the world it gets fragmented and so we have to bring it all the way back to before teachings and lineages and systems and ways we have to bring it back where all that is here is this moment here now nothing else nothing else just this moment here now. And all that is here is your own presence of being. Don't be so quick to jump in and say, yeah, yeah, but how do I live my life? Wait, be patient. Come to know yourself. Because in the knowing of yourself, you don't need to know. Because the intelligence knows. It's not your life. And it never has been your life. Life is intelligently living itself. The mind is in its own delusional idea that it's my life and I'm controlling this. So much tension, so much tension goes in to trying to own my life, my happenings, my family. None of it belongs to you. In truth, you're not even responsible for any of it, not even yourself. It's all just happening. And this is why the invitation really is to hand it over, hand it over again and again to the not knowing, to allowing. Of course, this is scary to the mind because the mind wants to know it wants to understand and it wants to believe that it does know. Now, this theory the mind has works very well when the me is getting what they want. Oh, look at the lovely things I'm creating. Look at the lovely experiences I'm having. Look at all the good things in my life that I'm creating. I'm manifesting. Now, what about the things you don't want? Who's bringing those in? Who's responsible for those? Where does the plan of the me go wrong, right? When suddenly, oh, yeah, what about that? Oh, the universe is doing that, right? It's all a bunch of nonsense and it has to be seen through. It has to be seen through because 
Yes, you are the creator, but you are the creator as consciousness. And what you are creating as my life is a reflection in truth of all that you are blind to. Either you are living in divine reality, absolutely free, euphoric, ecstatic, in the celebration of the glory, in the frequency of remembrance, or there is something playing to reflect a blind spot, to bring resistance, to bring triggers and charges, to bring the possibility of releasing the stresses that act as a tangled web, discordant patterns of consciousness that act as a tangled web, a web of mind that thinks it knows, thinks it needs to hold on to control. But in truth, everything is offering us the possibility to see through that. And this is where a natural inquiry offers us the possibility to notice what is happening here. What is this trigger? Am I trying to control things? What is the feeling here? What is the energy signature? Is there sadness here? Is there anger here? What is actually trying to surface and opening to truly allow and in truth to stop controlling in the ways that we have learned? We've learned to control the flow of consciousness and with that the flow of feeling we've learned to control the the natural flow of pure consciousness and so the discordant patterns are what is moving and we are believing the discordant patterns to be me i am these discordant patterns now really discordant patterns are like blockages in a pipe right all you need is to get the plunger out right give it a good plunge get those blockages moving and then the pure consciousness can flow within itself now the plunger that clears the blockages is the illuminated eye the presence of awareness the eye that looks without needing to know without judgment, the I that just looks, right? Awareness just looks, looks upon the discordance, looks upon the feelings. And where there's total openness, there starts to be the possibility to be honest, to be honest. We have learned to not be honest to tell little subtle stories. How are you? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm doing okay. Where really inside there's something else going on, right? Yes, we don't necessarily want to download <laughs> our all of our inner meanderings when someone asks how you are, but it's to be really honest with yourself. What's really going on? All the subtle ways that we tell little white lies here and there to make things feel smoother, to make things feel easier, rather than speaking the, the truth of what is happening in our experience. Holding it in. When the truth is that everything is conspiring to bring forward the feelings that just want to be felt. So the intelligence knows and the intelligence brings forward with exactly the right play, exactly what is ready to surface. There's nothing to do, but there's also nothing to hide from, nothing to fear, nothing to control nothing to resist, to allow 
what is naturally attempting to surface, to surface. So much of our suffering happens and also our issues that arise with the body. So much of this happens because we are habitually taught to suppress and to not even be honest with ourselves about what we are feeling. And in truth, spirituality has a big role to play. The great misunderstandings of spirituality has played the role in telling us that to be spiritual, that we should behave a certain way. And then we mix in our misunderstandings. Oh, I have to behave like this. I have to look like this. I have to show up like this. And in, in a way, we're creating our misunderstandings from our habit to hide and not be honest with ourselves. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling peaceful. I'm feeling okay. Oh, I've noticed that if I transcend, I can get away from that. And I can feel peaceful. But the truth is that the knowing of the transcendent field, the knowing of the transcendent field that you are, is actually not a place to escape and hide in. It is the radiant shining possibility to bring everything, everything into the light, into honesty, right? Now, this takes in the play of time as long as it takes because so much has been plugged up and pushed down that the kindness doesn't just surge it all forward. Although for sure there will be moments and periods of purging some of this stuff. But even the purging is a certain kindness that is creating situations in the life in order that we have the possibility of recognizing, well, actually, I'm angry. I'm actually angry. And you know, when you start to touch into anger that was pushed down when you were young, you don't really even feel angry. You feel the edges of aggravation, of a feeling of being stirred. But the habit can be to just feel even just that stirring, push it right back down again and come to trying to find an equilibrium. But what if we allow that stirring to come into the presence of love? I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. And it might take to express within your functioning, I'm aggravated. I'm agitated. Tell the truth. I'm agitated. I'm feeling flustered. I'm feeling hot. And suddenly the blockage will start to clear and the energy will rise and you'll start to feel, I actually want to shout, right? You start feeling like the truth of that anger, not just a, a little sense of, oh, I'm angry. I'm angry. Well, maybe I'm not really angry. Maybe, maybe if I just sit, it will go away. But the kindness is to allow. And of course, what is this energy here? It feels sad. It feels like grief. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I've got to get on anyway. I've got to get on. Oh, yes, a little bit of grief, a little bit of grief. Just but what if we actually just sit down and we take a breath? There's something here. We just allow what's here to be here and we speak honestly to ourselves. I'm here. I feel like tears want to come. I feel a sensation in my throat. I feel sadness. I feel grief. Oh, I'm seeing an image of my father, right? Oh, now, now I feel what it is, right? We let it come forward. We let that tenderness come forward. Oh, because you feel the heart open. You feel 
the heart open and there's an honesty and it feels like such a relief to be honest, to just allow the natural flow of intelligence to bring the feelings, the images, the insights, right? It's very, very natural and we've learned to suppress it. So as we open to the truth of the being, we also want to open to the truth of the natural intelligence and not divide our experience into a spiritual experience and a person's experience, but to open. In a way, we want to merge the sense of personhood into the remembrance that the person is consciousness in discordant patterns. The being is consciousness that is pure and open. And we want to be the openness that allows the discordant patterns of the person to let go, to release, but to not make a psychological project of that, as in, oh, I've got to do all this work or clear this up so that I can abide in the being. It has to be the other way around, it has to recognize the presence of the being because the presence of the being is the fine frequency that draws everything and that can hold everything in wholeness, in love, in light, in compassion. Because without this, we won't truly come to an honesty because there will be an interceptor judging, saying that's enough of that now, pull yourself together. Or it will start to bring forward fears. You're going to lose love if you, if you reveal that this is what's really going on inside you. And the holding starts to block things. It starts to create blockages in the physiology. And then these blockages are messengers that tell us what is holding here? What is going on in here? Can we open, truly open, to what is trying to surface? We open to what is trying to surface in the presence of the being that knows. We are the presence of being that knows. This is the true nature and this is where the knowing is. In this moment, the stillness, the silence that is underneath and before everything can feel the truth. Just the simple sense of presence, of being here now, the I am presence. I am, I am. This is the truth. This is truth itself. And the remembrance is right here, just here, simply being. And the remembrance has this magnetic pull drawing the true I into itself. It's a flow of attraction. It's a flow of devotion. It's a flow of surrender. Intelligently pulling, pulling the attention into itself, pulling the focus deeper and deeper into itself. Pulling you, you, the true you, into yourself here now. Now there will be the ways that the mind wants to resist. Just to be aware of resistance. To just be aware. The mind will say, well, I'm not getting it. I'm not following. 
that's not my experience. Be aware of that one, because that one doesn't know and never will know. Every being has the possibility here now to just be here, to feel the sense of presence. Don't let the words be a distraction and the mind and its addiction to hanging around, trying to be petty. Don't let the mind's pettiness pull you away from the possibility. This is all for you. And you can make the choice to not let go and just be here. That's okay. It's not a problem. But the invitation here is to feel the sense of presence, notice the sense of presence, your own presence, just simply being here right now, just being natural, open and free. Nothing to do, nothing to understand, nowhere to get to. Just being here, this moment, aware of thoughts that come and go and move like clouds through a wide, infinite, open sky. And yet you're the space. You are the wide, open space of the infinite being. You are boundless and free and it's utterly natural to be here. It is not about stopping the mind. It is not about the mind coming to this place. It's about noting, noticing that this presence is already here and it has nothing to do with the mind. It's here before the mind, during the mind, after the mind, this presence is just always here. And this is what sets us free out of the sense of personhood is the recognition that you have a truer identity here now that is the wide open space of being. That your true identity is just in this presence because this presence is bigger, vaster, wider, freer than the story of a me. We're not trying to change the story of me to a better story of me. We're just discovering that you are quite simply not the me that you have thought yourself to be, but that you are wide, open, spacious, infinite freedom. You are the presence of being that is utterly free. Here now, you can keep watching the movie of the mind, of the story, but you are not that. You are the awareness of it. Aware of the thoughts that come and go, aware of the images that are constantly changing, and yet you are resting always as yourself, always as the simple awareness. You can see the thoughts, the words, the pictures, the images. You can see the way they come together to make a story. But when the presence of I am is unidentified with any of those images, stories, words, pictures. When you are just resting here as the presence, you start to feel yourself as the presence that is independent of the words and the pictures and the stories. 
you start to feel yourself free and open, the wide open space in which all appearances are appearing, the wide open space in which body-mind consciousness appears. The mind creates a body in order to free itself. The mind creates a body in order to free itself. When the time is right, we free ourselves from identification with the body. We see that we only created the body so that we could use the body to free ourselves. To realize you are not the body. You are before the body. You are not the mind. The mind is the person and you are before that. You are always here. You never change. You are always the same. You are deep and still and silent. Unmoving. Unwavering. Silent being. Deep peace. Ever peaceful. You are everywhere boundless and free. And you know yourself here, not with the mind knowing, not the person having an experience, but the being itself. There's a deeper knowing that is not of the mind. The knowing of the being itself, simply being here, being the peace and wide open freedom here now, simple and free, natural and clear. If there is a sense of not knowing, let this be here. Let there be a not knowing, because this knowing, this deep true knowing, is not a knowing of the mind. It is not a me that is compassionate and patient and loving. It is love itself that is naturally boundless compassion, eternal freedom, patient and kind by nature. This is not a persona or something that you do. It's opening to reality, the reality of who you are. Before you imagined that you became someone, you have always been this boundless freedom, open and free. And the remembrance of yourself here is a resonance, a frequency of knowing, a knowing that is without doubt, without question. If there is doubt, that is the mind that is doubting. The knowing is unquestionable because it is immediate, here and now. This, this, this is who you are. This presence, this presence of being, it is the innermost being itself remembering. Oh, this, this boundless being is the truth of who I am. I am everywhere. I am openness, stillness that is ever present, silent and free. Yes, this, there is a lightness in the openness. There is an unquestionable remembrance. 
nothing to do, nothing to understand, just to be here as yourself, just to be here as yourself. Where the mind does not know, the knowing can come alive in its fullness. Noticing this knowing has always been here. You have never left yourself. You have never ever left this truth of who you are. You have always been free, open and clear. And this openness is the openness of true love. Love is this openness where there are no conditions. An openness that is naturally allowing and accepting. An openness that does not resist anything, anyone. An openness that is honest and clear, transparent, direct, natural, unguarded, unedited and free. Attuning to the resonance of remembrance underneath the frequency of the mind and its busyness, the remembrance is a subtle, fine frequency. Here you are. Here you are, free of the story, free of the mind, and yet simply aware. If thoughts come in, let them come in, be aware, and you will see they will float away again. This knowing, the knowing of the being is the flow the flow of life. And this flow is the flow of nourishment that we need in order to nourish the deepening, the deepening into the aliveness, the flow, the nourishing flow that is so alive, flowing within itself. This is life itself. And this is where the true identity lies. You are the stillness, the silence of being, and you are this flow of life, an impersonal, unlimited flow of life, flowing within itself. And so here in this flow, to just notice, there is no attachment to the words the pictures, the stories, the images. There's just a sense of just being, this wide open, spacious freedom, simple and still, silent and free. Noticing the frequency, the resonance of silence, so deep, so light.
dropping into yourself, to the silence. Nothing needs to happen. Just being here, just as you are. Mm. Tuning with yourself, tuning with the finer frequency of being, and be aware of the moving changing, and yet this being knows itself and is ever abiding in itself. The being has never left itself, never left itself, and you are the being not the person that you have imagined yourself to be. You are the infinite, eternal being. And whilst all of life might seem to be a distraction, it is actually what is inviting us to meet everything that seems to be an obscuration, meet the discordance, as the presence of being that is simply aware of the discordance and allow the discordant patternings to settle out into the remembrance of purity, to surrender into the light, the love and the freedom that is always here and available. So much a part of this unfolding is to have the fire for this truth alive in the heart, to recognize that all of the attention has to be given to this because the mind is so sneaky and it will come in with all kinds of ideas about what is important in the life. And the mind will believe itself and use <laughs> its own suggestions to give itself a reason to identify with the delusion. In a way, you have to see your own way out of the delusion. That if you are longing and looking for anything other than the truth of who you are, then there is delusion at play. There is somehow believing the mind's ideas about what the purpose of this life is. And of course, that will play for as long as it plays until the fire of the heart is strong enough, the pull is strong enough. And of course, that is all about a readiness, a readiness is when we recognize this is the focus of a human life. The focus is to remember this truth, to remember the love that is, to remember that the glory of God is all there is. And this is what we are here to remember. We are here to escape the belief in separation, the belief that you are a sinner, that you have done something wrong, and to stop cycling 
in these ideas and realize you are one with God. You are one with perfect love right now. And that in the presence of being, in the silence, you find eternity. You find the truth. Nowhere else do you find this truth but in the silence of the heart. The silence of eternity, the eternal life, the life that is forever before the play of birth and death, before the play of karma. And we are here to free ourselves from the cycles of karma and the investment, the mental investment in birth and death, the mental investment in, I'll just make another body and do it all again. <laughs> To see that you are not the body, you are not the mind, that you are utterly free. You are the eternal life. You are one with the glory. And when you come to realize the world has nothing for you, the world is merely a creation of the mind distracting itself. It is about keeping the focus with what is true, even in the most crazy storms of the mind, staying with what is true. Because we break the habits, we break the habit to just keep engaging with the mind, to keep believing and keep cycling in the delusion. The mind may tell you, you have all the time in the world. It's not true. There is a window that is wide open right now. And we are being invited to align with what is true, to align with the light that is so radiantly shining to bring the remembrance. Mm. We are being invited to turn to what is true with every fiber, to turn, to gaze into the light, receive the light, the remembrance, receive the remembrance of the love that you are, to receive the remembrance of wholeness, to truly recognize that the remembrance of wholeness does not come in the play of the world, to not believe the mind that tells you you have all the time in the world, You will find out for yourself whether that is true or not. Every being is where they are and no mistakes are made, but the outstretched hand of light of the glory is so radiantly calling right now. The resonance of this gathering is absolutely 
100% turned towards that which is true, that which is. Mm-hmm. Mm. No question. No question. It is not for everyone, and that is okay. That is okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the silence of the heart is the remembrance of eternity, the remembrance of forever. Heaven on earth, we could say, is to live this truth, to live in the paradise of the wide open heart. to realize the greatest gift to the seeming world, the greatest gift to the collective, is to know yourself and to live as this fine frequency of remembrance, to live as the light, as the love, and to shine, silently shine. Mm. The heart knows the truth because the true heart is the one truth, one heart, one truth, one divinity. Before all stories of fragmentation, all ideas of division, there is one wholeness. And to open into this remembrance, we enter through the presence of being into the silence of the one heart. And we allow the seeming nervous system to be so deeply nourished in the flow of bliss, the flow of love, that we are absorbing the nourishment, refining and refining and refining to be able to become a vehicle, the light, to get to the surface of life. So we are being purified and refined to be vehicles of light, to bring this light to the surface of life, just through living life. Don't need to know how, don't need to understand, because you are the intelligence that already knows. You are the intelligence that already knows. We are just inviting a realignment, a remembrance of the fineness of the intelligence that you are. To move away from the denser, brasher frequencies of the me and my life, my world, to the finer frequencies of divine wholeness. It's already here. Where are you? Where are you? In the stillness, in the silence, you find yourself within yourself. Within the silence of the heart, you find the knowing of your eternal nature, the timeless being that is boundless and free open as unconditioned love and unconditioned life living itself in utter integral freedom. Mm. Mm. So resting here, resting here, The resonance is spoken. Invitation is to attune, remember. And if anything is stirred in the process, 
It is just purification happening and it is grace. Nothing is outside. Whatever happens is exactly the perfection. Hmm. Nothing to control, nothing to tamper with. Just you be here, just as you are. So profoundly honest. So profoundly honest. Hmm.